The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning to you here at 5 a.m. Thanks for waking up with us on a Finally Friday. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Elena Rusk. All right, we begin this morning with developing news out of Northwest Bakersfield. Two shootings happening near Jefferson Street last night are under investigation after three people were shot within a four block radius. 17 News has reached out multiple times to Bakersfield police for more information, but it's not known as of this morning if the shootings are connected. According to BPD, one person was shot at Jefferson Park around 930 last night. That victim, a man, suffered non-life threatening injuries. A short time later, two shooting victims were found at Jefferson and Inyo streets just four blocks away from the first shooting scene. Here, one person suffered minor injuries, the other moderate. We'll continue to keep you updated as we learn more about these incidents. And now for your 17 News Homicide Tracker. New information on Wednesday night shooting at a popular shopping center in southwest Bakersfield. We are learning the victim was a correctional counselor at Wasco State Prison and a Navy veteran. But what we don't know, who killed him? 17's Christian Glano has the latest. Shoppers encountered a chaotic scene right outside of the Stockdale Highway Target on Wednesday night. Bakersfield police arrived just after 9 p.m. to find Alcala shot and bleeding to death on the ground. A Tesla Model Y was plugged in at the charging station at the parking lot. Medical target 11000 Stockdale Highway. PD is just driving on scene. Patients located near the electrical car charging station. Blue shirt, dark pants. Alcala was pronounced dead at the scene of the shooting. The Department of Corrections confirms that Alcala was a CDCR corrections counselor at the Wasco State Prison since 2006. A statement to 17 News CDCR says, We are keeping the Alcala family and all of our family at Wasco State Prison in our thoughts. We extend our deepest sympathies and our strongest support to all during these difficult times. CDCR says Alcala was promoted three months ago. The Bakersfield man had strong ties to his community. Sequoia Lee youth football sending its condolences to Alcala's family. He was one of the original coaches for the Delano Stallions Pee Wee Football League. For 17 News, I'm Christian Galeno. Now again, no suspect information or motive has been released by the BPD on this case. Anyone with information on this homicide asked to call them at 327-7111. By our count, there have been 69 confirmed homicides this far this year so far in Kern County. You can go to KGET.com and click the homicide tracker icon to see stories about victims and resources for those left behind and who've been impacted by these killings. And now to our 17 follow up file. The coroner has identified a man who was shot and killed after allegedly breaking into a home in Northeast Bakersfield over the weekend. Police called to a home on University Avenue near Redlands Drive for a report of an armed robbery around 1115 Sunday night. When they got there, police say they found 19 year old Aiden Marquez dead from an apparent gunshot wound. Police say Marquez was one of two suspects who reportedly broke into a home before someone living there confronted the men and opened fire. That second suspect has not been found. Police say the resident who shot Marquez has not been arrested and is cooperating with this investigation. And the search continues for the driver who hit and killed a woman in East Bakersfield Saturday night. It happened on Union Avenue near East 4th Street around 9.45 p.m. The coroner identified the victim as 56-year-old Vivian LaJoy Pope. Investigators say the driver who hit Pope sped away in an early 2000s black Chevy or GMC pickup with damage near the driver's side headlight. If you know anything about this case, you're urged to call BPD at 327-7111. In making news around the state this morning, California may allow more sick and dying inmates to be released from state prisons under legislation that cleared the state Senate and heads to the assembly for final approval. It would ease the current standard, which critics say is so restrictive that it keeps people incarcerated who are too sick to be dangerous. That not only fills prison beds unnecessarily, they say, but is costly because the inmates often require the most expensive and intensive care. The new threshold that advanced yesterday would allow inmates to be freed if they have a serious or advanced illness 
are permanently medically incapacitated or meet the standard used by the federal prison system. All right, and now Vanessa Bryant announcing she will donate the $16 million she was awarded by an L.A. jury in her photo-sharing lawsuit to charity. Every penny of the award, she says, will go to support the Mamba and Mabasita Sports Foundation. Vanessa Bryant, along with co-plaintiff Chris Chester, sued L.A. County over the grisly photos taken at the scene of the helicopter crash that killed her husband, Kobe Bryant, their daughter, Gianna, and seven others. Bryant's attorney says the case was never about money. She was only seeking accountability and justice for Kobe, Gianna, and the others. Now, in making news around the nation, by noon today, we're going to get a look at a redacted version of the affidavit used to justify the FBI search of former President Trump's home. This on the same day the Trump legal team has been ordered to provide more details in their request for an independent special master to review the evidence seized and determine if anything could be returned to the former president. NBC's Alice Barr has the latest from Washington. New details set to emerge this morning about the unprecedented search of former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. A federal judge ordering the release by noon today of a redacted copy of the affidavit used to authorize the search that led to FBI agents seizing 11 sets of classified documents. These are serious, serious national security issues that have to be examined. The former president and allies have demanded the whole affidavit be made public. That's why people can know whether there's a serious allegation or this is more manufactured. But the judge agreed with the Justice Department that some information should be blacked out because it could identify witnesses and law enforcement and reveal strategy as well as sources and methods. Still, there will be new information released. The judge describing the redactions as narrowly tailored. Former President Trump lashing out on his social media, calling the investigation into his handling of sensitive documents politically motivated. President Biden adamant he had no prior knowledge about the search. At a fundraiser overnight, he slammed MAGA Republicans as a threat to democracy. They refuse to accept the will of the people. The Trump legal team facing another deadline today to better explain why they want a third party known as a special master to review evidence seized from Mar-a-Lago and determine if anything should be returned. To, uh, you know, lend some um, neutrality to the process, uh, I, I think it makes a bit of sense. The Trump appointed judge reviewing that request, questioning key elements of its legal basis. The judge in that special master case questioned why Trump attorneys came to her instead of the judge who signed off on the search warrant and asked them to explain exactly what action the former president is seeking. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. And now for your 17 Crime Watch, the California Highway Patrol arresting three people during a crackdown on street racers and impaired drivers. This was happening over the weekend. The operation taking place from 7 p.m. Saturday night until 3 a.m. early Sunday. The CHP says the arrests were for DUI, reckless driving, and weapons charges. Three vehicles were impounded. 13 citations were given, along with 11 warnings. Also in your crime watch this morning, the Kern County Sheriff's Office is warning the public about a phone scam where the caller pretends they're from the agency. KCSO says some residents reporting getting these phone calls say that the callback number is 391-7500. And while that is KCSO's general number, they say they don't handle court order civil matters over the phone and never ask for payment or personal information. The caller has even used the name of active employees. If you receive such a call, you're urged to report it to the Sheriff's Office at 861-3110. Well, now to some sports news. NBA player Torian Prince was arrested at Miami International Airport on Thursday. The Minnesota Timberwolves forwards arrest was due to an outstanding warrant from Texas. He was taken to Turner Gifford Knight Correctional Center in Miami. And a Miami Herald article stated that the charge stems from traces of drugs found during a traffic stop in Tarrant County. The Minnesota Timberwolves released a statement saying they are aware of the report and they are in the process of gathering more information. And a joint practice between the Rams and Bengals yesterday turned into a series of melees, all ignited by Rams defensive and Leonard Floyd and Bengals right tackle Lael Collins. In total, there were three scuffles culminating with Rams defensive tackle Aaron Donald using two Bengals helmets as weapons, striking several of the Cincinnati players. 
That's when Sean McVay and Bengals head coach Zach Taylor decided to end the joint practice early. The NFL community is calling for a suspension for Donald, noting that the Cleveland Browns star Miles Garrett got an indefinite suspension when he swung one helmet during a game. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nextstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.